today we will be discussing upon a very important topic development of heart it is important uh, in your university examination as well as internal examination point of view also often asked as a short essay or short note so let's move on to the chapter first of all before getting into the topic let us discuss what are we going to study or discuss in this session we will be learning why do we need a heart we will be learning the beautiful story of two endothelial tubes developing into the heart the sophisticated organ that we see in our body then we will be learning about the development of the different septa so we will be basically learning about the development of three septa the inner atrial septum which divides the atria into right and left the inner ventricular septum which divides the ventricles into right and left and the atrio ventricular septum which divides the atria and ventricles then after the septa divides the heart into chambers next we we'll learn about the development of different chambers out of which the right atrial development is very important in the exam point of view after studying the development of all these major structures we will be studying the development of minor structures such as valves the conducting system of heart etc and last but not the least we will be learning the applied aspects or clinical significance of this topic in anatomy it is very very important that every time you write an answer at the end you should point out an applied aspect it is very very important so moving into the topic first of all an introduction why do we need a heart actually uh, after fertilization after the zygote is uh, formed and the embryo is implanted in the fundus of the uterus let's say the initial nutritional requirements are met by diffusion of the dead trophoblast cells endometrial cells but this is not enough for a rapidly growing embryo so it requires proper circulation through which the absorbed nutrients from the mother by the placenta should be circulated throughout the body so we need a complex circulatory structure and that is the heart so by the third week of the embryonic life let's point it to 22nd day the heart starts developing so the next question is from where the heart develops so heart is a big blood vessel blood vessels are mesodermal in origin as we all know there are three germinal layers the ectoderm the endoderm and this is the this is the ectoderm this is the endoderm and in between we have the mesoderm so there are three embryonic layers and again and again the mesoderm is divided into two parts the part of the mesoderm lying in contact with ectoderm the part of the mesoderm lying in contact with endoderm so the former one is known as somatopleuric mesoderm the latter one is known as splanopleuric mesoderm so we know heart is a big blood vessel it develops from mesoderm the next question is from which mesoderm the part of the mesoderm that lies in contact with the endoderm that is the splanopleuric mesoderm and again the fetus it contains ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm throughout from which region to be specific from the cranial part caudal to septum transversum now what is septum transversum what is the fate of septum transversum septum transversum from the name itself is going to form a transverse septum in the body what is the biggest transverse septum in the body the diaphragm so septum transversum is the future diaphragm so just caudal ventral to septum transversum there is a region in the cranial most portion of the embryo there is there is a region of the splanopleuric mesoderm which is going to develop into heart so that region cardiogenic area that region is called cardiogenic area now heart is surrounded by the pericardium between the two layers of pericardium you have the pericardial cavity so what is the cavity of the embryo it is the intraembryonic coelom right so the intraembryonic coelom of the cardiogenic area forms the pericardial cavity as simple as that so uh, this is a quick introduction into why we require heart and the initial stages from where how the heart is developing so in the cardiogenic area the region that is going to form the heart 
there are cells mesenchymal cells they condense they come together when they come together they form codes they are solid rods so this rods since they develop into heart are known as angioblastic codes two angioblastic codes are formed now inside the angioblastic codes canal formation takes place so solid codes turn into tubes so we have got two tubes they are known as the endothelial heart tubes they are known as the endothelial heart tubes so we have got two endothelial heart tubes now this two endothelial heart tubes starts fusing so this is the cranial aspect this is the caudal aspect this is the head aspect this is the tail aspect of the fetus so cranially the tubes fuse completely but caudally they don't that's why there is a y shaped inverted y shaped a tube is formed this is known as the primary endothelial heart tube this is known as the primary endothelial heart tube now in the primary endothelial heart tube five dilatations appear we will be learning the name of the dilatations in the coming slides so five dilatations appear i want you to note a specific point here so this tube this primary endothelial heart tube has got two ends a cranial end and a caudal end right the cranial end is the arterial end going to form the future big blood vessels like the aorta and the pulmonary trunk and the caudal end is the venous end going to form the great veins so superior and inferior vena cava just understand that the tube after fusion doesn't fuse completely in, in the caudal side fuses completely cranially and forms an inverted y like uh, tube which has got five dilatations the cranial part or the topmost part forms the arterial side and the caudal most side forms the venous side i think this much it is clear so next let's name this five dilatations right the cranial most which is going to form the future arterial end is known as arteriosus trungus arteriosus the caudal most one which is going to form the future vena uh, venous end is known as venosus sinus venosus in after the veins are connected to the atrium then you have the primitive atrium atria are connected to the ventricles so then you have got primitive ventricles then you have got bulbus cordis actually this trungus arteriosus is a part of bulbus cordis okay uh, we will be learning that actually we have got bulbus cordis this is the bulbus cordis this is the primitive ventricle we have got the primitive atria then we have got the unfused caudal side which is the sinus venosus fine so this is the bulbus cordis this bulbus cordis is again divided into is again divided into three parts into 1 by 3rds each so this is the proximal 1 by 3rd this is the middle 1 by 3rd this is the distal 1 by 3rd the distal 1 by 3rd is known as trungus arteriosus the middle 1 by 3rd the connecting portion is known as cornus cornus so this cornus forms the part of ventricles which opens into the great blood vessels as simple as that now we'll be learning the fate of each of this dilatations what else to note the sinus venosus it has got three parts it has got a central portion and two horns right this is the right horn this is the left horn so i think uh, this many this much stuff is clear now we will be discussing about the fate of the venous end that is the sinus venosus and the arterial end that is trungus arteriosus so what happens to sinus venosus so this is the primitive atria now as i said the sinus venosus has got a central portion and it has got two horns the right horn and the left horn three veins opens into each of this horns three veins right these veins are primitive veins that is they are not found in adult bodies they are kind of primitive veins what are these veins the names are important the common cardinal vein the umbilical vein 
and the vital line vein. So, three primitive veins open into each horns of sinus venosus. So, the common cardinal vein drains the body cavities of the body walls of the fetus. The umbilical vein comes from the placenta. The vital line vein comes from the yolk sac. So, these are the three primitive veins opening into each side. We will be discussing further about the sinus venosus in the development of atrium. Okay. So, this is the fate of the venous end. Now, what about the fate of the arterial end? So, this is our, this is our total bulbous cordis. As I said, bulbous cordis is divided into three parts. The proximal one, the middle one called cornus and the distal one called trungus arteriosus. This trungus arteriosus is going to form the future big vessels like the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. Okay. Initially, they joined with the aortic sac. They joins with the aortic sac. Aortic sac to that joins the first arch artery on each side. It goes behind and lateral to the developing foregut and comes down as the dorsal aorta. So, just remember this much. The topmost cranial end is called the arterial end because it gives rise to the future arteries. They are, it is known as a trungus arteriosus. It is a part of bulbous cordis itself. Now, to the strongest arteriosus, the aortic sac opens. Aortic sac has got two arch arteries on either side. This arch artery goes behind and lateral to the forehead and comes down as the dorsal aorta. This much is clear? Now, this is uh, what we learned about uh, the fate of the arterial and the venous end. What about the other three? The primitive atria, the primitive ventricle and the bulbous cordis. So, for the ease of uh, remembering, let us say uh, in such a way. Primitive. Primitive people were rough in behavior. Just for the sake of uh, uh, remembering this stuff. Primitive people were rough. So, wherever primitive is coming, it is going to form the rough part. Okay. So, primitive atria is going to form the rough part of atria. Both the atrias of the right atria and the left atria. And primitive ventricles are going to form the rough part of ventricles, right and left ventricles. Now, just say, the ventricles receives the blood from atria. It pumps the blood into the big blood vessels. So, the receiving part where the blood gushes into the ventricle should be hard. So, the rough part forms the inflowing part. Okay. Now, the next dilatation, bulbous cordis. Bulb. It is soft. So, bulbous cordis, cordis forms the smooth over outflowing part. So, that uh, primitive ventricles rough, inflowing part. Bulbous cordis smooth, outflowing part. Now, the smooth part of right ventricle is known as cornus arteriosus. The smooth part of left ventricle is known as aortic vestibule or infundibulum. Just remember the terms if possible. Now, this is just a summary about how the two endothelial tubes fused cranially completely but not fully caudally to form the pri uh, primary endothelial heart tubes, how the five dilatations came into existence and uh, what are the fate of all those dilatations which you have already discussed. Now, between the primitive ventricle and the primitive atrium, there is this opening, right? That is known as the atrioventricular canal. Just note the name. It is known as the atrioventricular canal. Okay. 